YouTube, I'm Crystal of CrystalSellsAndStuff.com. Welcome or welcome back to the channel where I share sewing pattern reviews and other fun sewing related content. So here to, I'm here today to share with you my review of McCall's 8113, a sewing pattern that I created to participate in the 2022 Little Red Dress Project. And if you didn't know, this is a really fun um, Instagram sewing challenge where you go ahead and sew up a red garment for the holidays and it was created by the lovely Renata of the Twilight Stitcher here on YouTube as well as on Instagram and this year she's co she's co-hosting the challenge with the lovely Talisha of Creativity by T here on YouTube as well as on on Instagram and this is just such a really fun sewing challenge and to participate in the challenge you just have to sew up a red garment um, for the holidays in previous years it was for you to sew up a dress but this year um, it's been expanded so that you could sew up a standalone garment as well so you could sew up a blouse a top a jacket a jumpsuit a blazer so any kind of standalone um, garment you can go go ahead and sew up for the challenge and this year I decided to go ahead and sew up a top so this pattern has three main views there's view a which is a long sleeve um, a short peplum top view B which is um, uh, kind of three-quarter sleeves or short sleeves with the flounce on the um, sleeves and then there's view uh, C and then an asymmetrical uh, hem and then there's view C with um, flutter sleeves and a really long um, uh, high low hem um, but it's straight and kind of curved in the back so three main views for my version I combined views A and um, B to create my top because I wanted long sleeves um, because it's winter time and then I like the drama drama of the asymmetrical hem so I decided to combine those two views in order to create this look so this pattern is available in sizes 8 through 24W. So there are two size ranges. There's sizes, um, uh, envelope sizes. So there's sizes 8 through 16 and then sizes um, 18 through 20, 18W through 24W. And it also has cup sizes um, for A cup all the way through triple D cup. So this is a re really good um, size range and bust measurements of 31 and a half inches through 46 and a half inches. So it's a really good size range, especially because they have different cup sizes. So I ended up sewing up a size 14 and then uh, graded out to, the 16, to a size 16 at the waist. And I sewed up the um, AB cup size. I, at first, cut out the size C and it was a little bit too big and so I went back and I cut out the size AB um, cup size so I think if you're um on in between sizes you probably want to go with the smaller cup size um, just because um, that's how that's how it worked out for me but make sure you do your measurements um, and follow the guidelines um, in the pattern for measuring your uh, bus size so the fabric that I chose is uh, African wax print and I bought this fabric from FA and Company and this is a small um, fabric store here in Maryland in Parkville, Maryland and I'll leave a link to their Facebook page if you wanted to call them and check out and see if they have this exact fabric available. But this is a really pretty African wax print but the type of wax print is called the type of wax print is called Supreme Basin. So it's a really pretty shiny um, fabric. Um, it, it's a bit more shiny. It is cotton, but it does have a nice little sheen to it. And it's a bit more lightweight um, than your typical African wax print. And I really love how shiny it is. I did pre-wash it and it didn't shrink much. Um, but it, the shine stayed the same because, you know, with traditional African wax print, when you wash it, it can become a little bit more dull. But this when I pre-washed it, um, it came out just as shiny as when I put it in the wash. So I re I'm really in love with this fabric and it's a bit more lightweight, I would say, than your traditional African wax print. So I'm really in love with this beautiful um, print. It's like circles and like little flowery kind of shape. So I'm really in love with this print that I chose from for the um for this challenge for this top so I purchased the digital version of this um pattern McCall's 8113 this is my first time ever sewing up the digital digital version if you didn't know McCall's and um I believe Butterick um also has 
digital versions of a lot of their sewing patterns. Not all, the older ones, they still don't have a um, digital version, but the newer ones that are coming out, they have it in print as well as in digital format. And this, um, I purchased the digital version because I had missed the sales for the in-person one, the um, in-person sale at Joanne's, and it was still on sale. And so I went on ahead and purchased um, this pattern for $3.99. So if you're interested in trying out the digital patterns, be sure to check out the um, Something Delightful website because they the McCall's and the Butterick patterns, they do have um, digital versions available um, for you to go ahead and um, print and take together like you do um, some of the a lot of the independent sewing patterns. So I do like that they do have a um, digital version for you as well. And so if you missed the the main sale at Joanne's, you can always wait for it to come out in digital version um, online. You can just print it, and that way, if you if you mess up your sizing, you can always tape and reprint it. Um, you can reprint it and tape it together, and then you always have the sizes available to you. So, anyway, so. I enjoyed the process of taping. Well, not enjoy it, but <laughs> the pattern um, is 61 pages um, for the view that I chose. Um, it was it's 61 pages in letter format. And so, but I didn't print out all of the pages. I did look at the overall um, chart and I skipped some pages like the D cup and um, the shorter peplum that I didn't need um, for my, for the views that I wanted to sew, but they don't really have a guide for you to um, select certain pattern pages. And um, the pattern pages, you, it's not layered, so you can't, uh, just say, say select a size 14, you know, check off just the size 14. Um, so those are the only downsides. And it was, there wasn't a um, copy shop version available. So because it was available in letter, letter size, legal size, and A4 um, size, which is the European um, paper size. Um, so, but overall, it's still a good deal because it was only $4 for the pattern compared to like, say, 10, 12 and up for a lot of your um, independent sewing patterns. So anyway, I'm glad I went on ahead and picked up this digital version. It was a good experience. It was really easy to tape together, just like you would any other, um, say, independent sewing pattern. It was really easy to follow the, um, the guide to go ahead and tape up the pattern. And then also the instructions come in a separate file, um, separate from the different versions of the printable pattern. So I did like that, that the um, instructions, you didn't have to print out the instructions along with the pattern pieces. So I did like that part. So you can just leave the instructions on your computer or you can choose to print it out or print it out double-sided. However you like to do your, um, your digital patterns. I did like that you can go ahead and just have that separate. You didn't have to print out the, um, the instructions and the pattern pieces and the pattern pages together. It was in two, in different files. So I did like that about the um, McCall's um, digital pattern. So there aren't a lot of pattern pieces. There are eight pattern pieces for the views that I combined to make my top. So the pattern pieces that I use are the front, which is cut on a fold. And then there's the back pattern piece cut twice. The You have your sleeves cut twice. And then you have your front peplum and that's one really long piece and then you have your back right peplum piece and then your back left peplum piece and then you have your front neck facing and your back neck facing. I think this pattern is great for your advanced beginner to intermediate sewists and up because there is an invisible zipper in the back and so if this is this is a good pattern for you to try if you've never tried an invisible zipper so I think this would be a good pattern to go ahead and start on because there aren't a lot of other um, things going on with the pattern so because there aren't a lot of pattern pieces so um, this is a really straightforward pattern the directions were really clear um, the only problem I had with the directions were the sleeves because they had you sew up the side seams of the sleeves and then put some elastic on the side for a ruching effect and it was kind of hard for me to get the elastic under the machine for that but I I worked it out, but it was kind of hard to get it under there without catching the opposite uh, opposite side of the sleeve, but I managed it. But if I had to do it again, I would definitely go ahead and add the elastic and then sew up the side seams. Um, and the sleeves were also pretty long on me, so I did end up having to cut like 
three inches or so off so you can barely see the ruching effect on it but I still like how they turned out um because the sleeves were they were super long on me but um I'm pretty short so I mean most people probably wouldn't be that long but I do like um I did have to cut off some of the sleeves when I went to, when, went to go ahead and hem the bottom of it but anyway that was my, that was the only like main problem I had with the pattern other than that it was really a really easy and straightforward so you, all you had to do was um you went on ahead and sewed your your back to front you enter, inserted the sleeves and then you added there's a pleat there is a nice little pleat right here in the front um right here and I, you had to do a pleat and then you um you sewed your front peplum to your to your right and back right and left um back peplum pieces and then um you gathered your you gathered gather the peplum and then you attached it to the top part and then um and then after you attached it to the to the after you attach your peplum to your bodice piece you go ahead and um add your invisible zipper and well you do the sleeves before that but well you add your sleeves after you do your bodice and then you attach your peplum and then you add your invisible zipper and then hem the bottom so really straightforward directions i think they had you hem the bottom before you um before you attach the peplum but i always like to do that at the end that way you know <clears throat> you know how the length is going to turn out on you i do usually like to hem the bottom of things at the end but i didn't make any adjustments to it so i like how it's long on me because i'm pretty short so to me for this pattern comes out looking more like a mini dress than a top on my height which i'm five one so i do like how dramatic it is even though it's just a top from on me it's kind of like a mini dress and top kind of combined in one so i like that so i didn't go ahead and shorten it at all just because i like the dramatic effect of it the only thing i did had to shorten like i said before was the sleeves because they were super super long on me so i sewed up a size 14 and then graded out to a 16 at the waist um just because the the waist sink, waistline was a little bit too small and so but i'm happy with how it all turned out with this sizing um the other thing that i did other change that i made was when i did the zipper it didn't come all the way up to the top so i did go ahead and add um i did add a button and thread loop at the top just to close it because it came like right here and just to make it more um so, so it could, because it came up right here, just to make it look nicer, I went on and added a button and a thread loop to close the top back of it up. But it doesn't require that. I think maybe just check when you do your zipper to make sure it's going to come all the way up to the top before you go ahead and add your zipper. You might want to just um, bring up the dot that's on the peplum up just a little bit so it could come all the way up in case you don't have a button and... Um, Thread, you know, if you don't want to do the button and thread loop or do a hook and loop at the top. Um, but I like how it turned out. I fortunately had a button that matched. And it was a little fabric cover button that I had in my button stash, just of miscellaneous buttons that I picked up thrifting in different places. And it was the perfect size <laughs> for this top. So I'm glad I had that in my button collection. So you never know when you'll use those little buttons. It, I know a lot of you all have a button jar. And I was so glad that um I had this little red button that matched perfectly so I'm glad I went on ahead and added that I really enjoy sewing up this top it was a really fun top I like how it looks kind of like a dress and a top on me it's really a fun um thing to wear I can't wait to wear it out um I was supposed to wear it to a party but I got a little sick um but I'm recovered now so I'm re recovering and now so I'm glad I'm um on the mend so I got sick right after Thanksgiving. I was supposed to go to this party, but then I got sick, so I couldn't um, go to the party. But anyway, I'm glad I got it done in time for this really fun sewing challenge. And so now let me share with you some picks and twirls of this really fun and dramatic top.
those are the picks and twirls of McCall's 8113. I hope you get a chance to check out this pattern. It was a really fun sell. And I also hope you get a chance to participate in the Little Red Dress Project for 2022. You get to this this week is reveal week. So you get to reveal your project from December 19th through the 24th on Instagram and be sure to go ahead and um, DM Renata um, your final pictures for so she can do a nice roundup and so that you can be eligible for prizes. And also be sure to check out the other ambassadors for the challenge. They are Andra of Andra Makes, Helen of Stitch, Rich, Stitch Rip Repeat, Rochelle of Rochelle Handmade Designs, Sharon of Sharon Sews. We have Becky of Notes from the Sewing Room, Karen of So Little Time, Luxie of Mrs. Buta Benji, and T of Crumpus Tea and Sewing. So be sure to check out their YouTube channels and Instagram um, channels as well. And I'll leave links to their social media in the description box so you can check them out as well. I do hope you get a chance to participate in this really fun challenge. I'll leave a link to the Instagram hashtag so you can check out all the makes that have that are gonna be popping up for this year's challenge. And until next time, take care. Bye.